time again for us to review all the ways in which the media covers themselves in glory. Joining us now to discuss is friend of the show, Katie Halper, host of the Katie Halper Show, co-host of the Useful Idiots podcast. Great to see you, lady. Good to see you, Katie. Thanks. You guys, too. Great Absolutely. To see you. So we got a lot of cringe for you to react to. Let's start with Joy <laughs> Reid. Where else? Oh Let's take a God, listen. I know. As I'm watching this, I'm thinking, you know, Fidel Castro, Julius Caesar, Mobutu Sese Seiko. Um, that was not an American president giving an acceptance speech. That was a monarch. It was, it was very much like what Castro used to do an hour and 10 minutes that clocked in of just, you know, it wasn't, he, it wasn't a usual Trump speech with his ad libs and sort of the, he did the sort of humor kind of thrown into it. There you go. So Fidel Castro, it's a monarch. What is going on here, Katie? Okay. I, I mean, this is just, look, you can criticize the guy, but like that is just ludicrous. Yeah. I mean, first of all, Joanne Reed, what she, congratulations, Joanne Reed. You have joined the ranks of right wingers who have no idea how to compare Fidel Castro to people. <laughs> I mean, are you, who point. am I listening yeah. to, right? Like, you know who Joanne Reed was last night? That wasn't American journalism. That was Donald Trump, right? <laughs> like, she's literally taking a, a page from their playbook. Um, Fidel Castro was not a monarch, Joanne Reed, uh, just in case you missed that in history class. Um, look, that yes, okay, I, I will I will grant that the, the length of the speech was somewhat Castro-esque. Um, and actually, Castro famously said that the reason he gave it such long speeches was to prove to his adversaries that he didn't have a prostate problem. I actually referred to that last night. Um, but that's a great Castro quote. But, I mean, this is just ridiculous. <laughs> uh, like, also, why is she being... Uh, again, playing from the Trumpian playbook, like foreign, you know, there's such a xenophobic also like term to it, uh, framing to it. And also, again, pick a narrative. I thought we were already living under Trumpian rule and we were already in that kind of, uh, you know, non-democracy. I, yeah. I thought it was already that. But what I guess it's going to be worse the next term. But again, of all the things like what did Fidel Castro ever have like fireworks yeah. With his name in right. them above his shoulder. I mean, that was just, it's just such a lazy, stupid comparison. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I know that, like, I know MSNBC, they, I think what happened is they have all these really ridiculous red baiting zingers that they, they're, they prepped for Bernie Sanders and they used on Bernie Sanders. But because he's not the nominee, I guess they want to use the, them up because uh, they put so much thought into them. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it's ridiculous. It's really I, ridiculous. I thought it was funny too that like the only thing she pointed to was the length of the speech. But wasn't Bill Clinton famous also for giving oh, really lengthy speeches? Yeah, and that's, right. That was pointed was, to as like like he's an oratorical master. Exactly. And right. You know. Right. Apparently. Right. Right. Yeah. So right, yeah. I could, and, and I just always feel like with Trump, what they go to is these really squishy, amorphous concepts. Yeah. Which are what, you know, everybody from like a John Kasich to a standard issue resistance liberal can agree on these like squishy, amorphous things because you can make them into whatever you want them to be. Right. That's true. And yeah. so it, it's never specific to the policy. Right. It's never specific right. to like the actual words in the speech and grappling with them. They never can grant him. You know, there was we, we covered here. I mean, we we criticize the speech, too. But right. there was a very effective line of attack on Joe Biden there. Like, they could never even grant him no. anything. And so it makes the totality of their coverage seem very dishonest. It does. And also, the irony is that, look, we all know we have agen an agenda, right? And they have an agenda, and that's fine. But the irony is that they are so out of touch and that their hatred of Trump uh, is so kind of debilitating that what they don't realize is that they're actually doing Trump a favor. They're actually being irresponsible because they did this last time and they have no ability to look at how this speech may have landed for Trump's base and also for undecideds, right? And like what what we did last night during our drinking game that I did on uh, my YouTube channel uh, with Matt Taibbi and Thomas Frank is that we granted when this was effective. Like, you don't have to agree with his messages. You can think that he's scary. I think he's scary. I thought last night was scary, but can't they have to be able to admit that it was well done and well executed? Because if you don't admit that, you're again doing what happened in 2016 where you're underestimating him. And if he is this existential threat, unprecedented existential threat, 
you have a responsibility to acknowledge when he's being effective because in theory you should be like mobilizing against that you should be preparing against that right like this isn't going to be as easy an election as people think for joe biden yeah. and they can't see that because it goes against their their hot takes and their and their contempt for anyone who would consider voting for trump and uh, it's really actually totally irresponsible and it's right. not resistance and Katie, I think it's just such an excellent point that you make there about by about their inability in order to grant anyone the agency of this is why you might want to vote for Trump. And if you want to combat that, as I think you do, then you probably right. need to engage with it. No, exactly. but they can't even do that. Right. Exactly. And, you know, it's funny, the real inability to understand this stuff is like was also on display when you saw Rachel Maddow freaking out about um about Trump's, uh, who was it? Tiffany Trump, I believe, yeah. who pointed out Trump, Biden's nepotism and pointed out Hunter Biden. And they they are so incapable of understanding how politics works. All they do is say, what about Trump? What about his corruption and nepotism? And again, yes, that is there. But what they don't understand is that that's not off brand for Trump. Trump has this get out of jail free card for better or for worse. They need to acknowledge it. He does not have to be consistent. That is not his brand. Nobody cares when he's inconsistent, honestly, and a hypocrite. And his major strength, and this is why Bernie Sanders would have been the most, I think, competitive against Trump, his major strength is going at people's inconsistencies and hypocrisy. Because Joe Biden does run on not being a hypocrite, right? Like, that is his lane. And so that undermines his, his credibility. Whereas mm -hmm. with Trump, no one cares. No one's like, oh, well, he hired his, his he gave his kids these jobs and, and he did this and the emoluments clause. Nobody who likes Trump could care less about yeah. that. And it's yeah. actually, right. again, it's really irresponsible if you Hat want to right. defeat him. <laughs> yeah, or like, or Pompeo violated the diplomatic historical right. precedent yeah. of Secretary <laughs> of, of State. Oh my God, there's Trump's face up in arms, forget yeah. it. He <laughs> just lost, you know, 2020 is, is done, it's gone. Yeah, but um, yeah, so it just, yeah, it really is. And again, if you find, mobilize, organize, try to defeat Trump, I think those are very lofty goals. I want to do the same thing, but you're not gonna do it when you're this out of touch and you can't even for a second look at how people think who aren't at your dinner parties. And the other amazing part was when um, Trump's son, Eric Trump said his father, I love this. Uh, both moved the capital in Jerusalem, in Israel, and achieved peace in the Middle East. I don't know if you know that. Heads up, there's peace in the Middle East. Oh. Um, and he talked about ending wars. And Rachel Maddow, who spends her entire life going after Trump for not being hawkish enough, basically, d well, actually, uh, well, actually, is Eric Trump. And it's like, actually, he's increased military personnel. It's like, wait, I thought... You were mad at him for not doing that. And now right. you're actually undermining your own criticism of him just to own the Trumps. Yep. Yeah. When your Good only point. guiding principle is like, I'm against whatever he's for. Exactly. Then, especially when what he's for is like all over the place every day. So right. You're and it's got, up, right. Well, Inevitably, you're there's with no principles. Right. Inevitably, he's going to land on something that is actually good, maybe for the yeah. wrong reasons, but he's going to. And you need to say that's good. That doesn't mean that you like Trump. But again, these people are actually more hawkish than Trump in some areas. So it would yeah. make sense. Right. This Great point. True. Great to see you, Katie. Thank you. Thank you, Katie. Thank you, too. Bye. All right. We'll have more content for you later today.